bit of an update. Give you a quick little rundown on where things stand for our uh, program changes. There are a number of changes that we want to talk about tonight and um, make people aware. Um, we will be putting this information out in a number of different ways so that people who are uh, maybe not familiar with the changes that are coming will, will be in time for them. So the, uh, the first change, that we, well, let's talk about the current program. So we are, are currently, um, it's a residential four dwelling units or less uh, program. You can um, opt into that program, or for the most part, I guess it's an opt out. Um, you know, we'll get notified if people in that category do not want to be part of the program. The uh, annual flat fees determined each year for the services that are uh, provided in the program. The uh, residents are limited to disposing their trash in up to uh, two 50 gallon trash barrels. That was a recent um, change in our last um, hearing on that. And we also have, you know, on occasion some overflow trash that happens and they've been allowed to call um, DPW to arrange for JRM to, JRM to pick up that overflow trash. There's a little bit of coordination that, that does happen and I'm sure there are other um, situations where just overflow trash is just left out there without notification as well but nonetheless um, that is what's happening. The um, Bulk items are picked up. There's one bulk item per week that they're allowed, uh, such as at this point in time, still mattresses, box springs, furniture. Uh, other things can be left curbside for trash collection on the same day. In JRM, at no additional cost to the resident, will be picking that up. CRTs and TVs, uh, computer monitors, those things do have a cost. Uh, there is uh, a scheduled pickup that would happen, and yes, in a cost actually is not charged to the residents of this particular one. It's a $15 charge per piece to the town. White goods, the air conditioners, washers, dryers, that's another scheduled pickup. In that case, there is a cost to the resident for those pickups. And um, if it's free on base, there is um, a little bit more to the cost than non-free on base. Special collection events, so we've conducted, uh, as conducted at the uh, DPW garage, so we have uh, special collection events each year uh, available for all residents of North Reading, regardless of whether they're in, in the program or not. And uh, June event offers free paper shredding, material collections for recycling, which are plastic, waste oil, metal batteries, and fluorescent bulbs, tires, propane tanks. They're all collected and disposed of. The October Special Collections event, scheduled uh, for the 15th of the month, in addition to other material collections, Office of Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day. This is free to all residents. Brush and leave drop off, oil drop off events continue to be open to all residents from April through October, and on the last Saturday of the month. And on uh, Saturday and Sunday in the month of November. And the sanitation budget annual, annually includes funding to support these special events. So, implementation of changes to the solid waste disposal program October 1st, 2022, new public services. Purchases of, purchase of JRM takes effect. And they will be transitioning their equipment and their labor force. In the fall, in the months to follow, effective November first, we are offering rolls of page to throw trash bags that will be available for purchase at um, local retailers, and they are to be used to dispose of overflow trash. The bag size will be 33 gallons, and will be holding approximately 35 pounds of trash. Residents no longer need to call the DPW for notification of overflow trash. So this is effective November 1st. The public services will automatically pick up the overflow trash if it's in a patient throw bag. They will not pick it up if it's not in that bag. Do you have an idea of where those bags will be sold? There's a list that will show. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Getting ahead. All right. Mr. Mr. Studo. 
Um, just a quick question. Uh, if, because I know, I mean, I guess you buy a second barrel, but if you have like a 50 gallon, like, you know, your barrel with a few bags and then you have like a contractor bag next to it, if it's not, they won't take it unless it's in another 50 gallon. Well, you know, that, yeah, there's going to be, just there's going to be some um, mix of bags and barrels that <clears throat> still should equate to, you know, two barrels, if you will. But you can't have, I, I wouldn't want to see, you know, two large contractor bags, exactly. a 50 gallon, gallon barrel, yeah. and, and no patient throw bag out there, you know? <clears throat> so, to what degree we want to say, you know, put it all in the barrel, if it doesn't fit, you know, put the rest in a patient throw bag. But some people do have it as loose bags out in the street. Uh, and the only, the only reason I say is like, and again, I can even talk from my own, uh, I know, I don't have two because I never really need to. So the thing is, I mean, I guess if people, it just so people know that if, if you do have those one-offs where you would have like a, instead of your regular barrel, like another big trash bag you'd put out there, you know, just because you don't have a second barrel that now you do need to have a second, just so people know and the, you know, because I could see a call coming in and saying, well, I had like a one trash bag next to like the 50, but I didn't have two 50s out, so why didn't you collect it, right? Isn't that the same? I, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. No, it's a good question, for sure. I'm going to piggyback on that because we have a 700 foot driveway, so we just drive the bags. We don't have barrels at all. So we just put the bags out. So that's a good question. They're going to pick up the bags as long as it would be considered what would be in a. Yeah, you know, you, you don't want to have a situation where, you know, those that are um, collecting the trash have to guess a lot, you know. But I mean, if you if you talk about having six tall kitchen bags out there, is, does that equate to two, you know, uh, contractor bags? You know, it's hard to really sort of have a, a good uh, sense on that. You know, but if you had them all contained in, I guess, you know, put two or three kitchen bags in a in a contractor bag, that would probably cost constitute one barrel. That's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Contractor bags. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to find out. <laughs> you know, when my trash is blown over to your house. <laughs> but, the, but the point is, you're paying a fee, so you might as well get the barrel and put it in the barrel and just wheel it up there. Or oh, just wheel it up there. Mm -hmm. Or leave or the barrel at the bottom of the driveway. Take you your bags down like you do a throw in the barrel. And then every snow storm, I'll get them your barrel. All right. Right? There you go. Okay. <laughs> it's not a one, one size fits all, but you'll, you'll have a routine uh, out of work. For trash. You. Yeah. yeah. Always we always trash. talk a lot about trash. Yeah, yeah. we love trash talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Okay. We're only on slide three, I think. So and we have a 7.30. I'm talking to the room. Yeah, room so. All right, so, um, so I want to talk a little about uh, new DEP waste bin uh, regulations, uh, matches of box springs. And so effective November 1st, everything's happening together November 1st. Uh, these items will no longer be allowed to be, really? to be disposed of in the trash. They're to be recycled. Um, so residents will be responsible for proper recycling of their old mattresses and box springs. If a you know, new mattress and box spring is being purchased, residents should make arrangements with the company they purchased their uh, mattress from to haul away their old mattress and box springs. That, that would be the first ideal step. We are looking to see if there's um, opportunity to have a, a container at the DPW garage where, you know, for free they can they can bring that mattress to that location if they are without any other means to do so. Um, so that is uh, where that stands. We are actually having uh, DEP has a um, bit of a, a meeting or seminar tomorrow to to bring in some mattress companies to give us a little bit more information about services that they're offering as well. So. You know, every municipality is in a similar situation trying to figure out you know, the best way to service mattress and box, box spring uh, collections and, and recycling. So the uh, the other um, thing that uh, looks, um, that is a waste bearing regulation is uh, clean textiles. So we'll talk about clothing, bedding, towels, shoes, pocketbooks, uh, not contaminated with mold, bodily fluids, insects, oils, hazardous substances. Uh, from being disposed of the trash. So if it's clean and you can you know, donate it, bring it to a bin, textile bin, um, 
or some other collection services, then that's what you need to do. And there are some local um, uh, places in uh, nearby. Uh, there is um, in Wilmington, there's uh, Savers, there's Green Salem and Andover. There's a number of uh, textile donation bins uh, from various organizations near town and town. Yeah, there's some right in the uh, parking lot at the high school. Uh, and again, we had a, a proposal that didn't go very far because COVID came along. There's an outfit that I was in contact with that was willing to bring the bins to North Reading. And again, they'll pay you a certain small amount of fee for the stuff that's put there. And again, a lot of local organizations and other communities are doing this, and like probably at the high school too. Some of the PTOs or some other um, local uh, community groups, and, you know, that raises a little bit of money mm -hmm. uh, and does the right thing. It gets rid of the textiles appropriately. Right. But I know there's some right in the uh, parking lot at the high school, the lower, lower a, parking lot. A new one recently put at the, uh, the Moose Lodge as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. So um, they have a sign up. But there are a lot of, uh, there's a few of them available around town, but I think we should try and help facilitate that too. And again, we may want to, you know, put it towards the historical commission to help finance, you know, their, their undertakings or things like that. But make space available, whether it be at the DPW site down at, uh, you know, here at Town Hall. But other locations around town too, mm -hmm. and they're they're willing to bring them in. So, all right. So, um, other changes. So, actually, you know, not so much a change, but one bulk item per week, other than the mattresses and box springs, can continue to be left at the curb on a regular uh, trash collection day, and be picked up by the public services at no additional cost to the oh, residents. Thank God, one last thing for us to hear complaints about. Okay. Um, CRTs and uh, TVs, all that stays the same. Right. White goods, all that stays the same. Right. Just so going to take out the uh, mattresses and box springs from the bulk out. I, I believe CRTs were free. That's a change, right? That increase. Um, so if I did not, uh, well, it's fifteen dollars to the town. To the town, not to the residents. Correct. Per se. Yeah. Yeah. So the residents are not charged, but you know we get a tally of what was collected, and, and we uh, see that on our invoices, so we keep track of that. All right. Um, so, <clears throat> what is the cost of the page throw bags? Uh, well, the page throw bags are sold in rolls of ten bags at a price of twenty-five dollars per roll, and mass sales tax do not apply to the sale of the, the bags. The retail purchase price of the page of quote bag, as we talked about the last time we met, is the price to cover the cost of the manufacturing and distribution of the bags, plus the cost of the, of the uh, trash that's contained in the bag. So where can I purchase page of quote overflow bags? So a number of local retailers are being invited to participate in the retail sale of page of quote overflow bags. The list is Stop and Shop, Walgreens, CBS Pharmacy, Route 28 Lucky Mart, Joe's Quick Mart, Rider Store, Christopher's Market, 7-Eleven. All of these um, companies will, or, or locations will be receiving a uh, invitation letter from Waysero. Um, they, those letters will probably be dropped in mail on Monday. Um, I'm also going to be making, um, you know, a trip to hopefully each one of these stores with uh, Dan Greenberg to look at uh, or, to, or talk to managers of these stores uh, on Monday, the ball works on Monday. And uh, at least give my heads up that more information is coming in, in that if they see a letter, don't throw it away, you know. So that's a little bit about reach there. You're going to add on the two hardware places too. So and we could, yeah, we yeah. could add on, exactly, if, if there's more interest, I mean, a lot of these stores will do it because they want the walk-in business right. when people come in to, Bags are also going to buy a few other things, most likely. I know I do. All right, so we have a public hearing coming up, but I just want to give the my colleagues a chance if you have any questions about that presentation. All set. But just just a comment again. Appreciate all the effort that's been put into it, not just by the administration here, but the recycling committee. This has been a long time coming, in helping to address you know ensuring that people are recycling more, get more conscious of uh, what, uh, make it a little little bit more fair as far as the pay as you throw. Um, it doesn't get us to where we really want to be as far as the people who are just putting out one barrel a week are still paying more than those that are putting out two. And uh, But we're getting there. And I think this is a great start. And I think uh, 
the state is also forcing us to address certain situations too, and that's not a bad thing either. So again, I applaud everybody's effort in getting this to come to fruition. And, and uh, uh, if we can expand the, the retail outlets you know, a little bit more like hardware stores to, to help facilitate this, that'd be great. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Walner. And we met just before this meeting, um, and there'll be a campaign to get you know letters to the editor, social media, um, stickers. You know, like as as the month goes on, we're going to be telling people you have an oversized barrel, you have too many barrels. Like there's going to be ways to communicate with people even before it hit November one to let them know that this okay. is coming. Okay. Um, and I would ask um, at town meeting if you know if we have board reports if I can just do a short. You know, um, they're going to write up something for me. But at the um, town meeting on Monday, if I can also announce some of these changes. Well. Article one. Oh. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Article one. Yeah. You have a, a sixty second limit, though. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're trying to get as oh no, as no. Much I'm just I'm as just we possibly you. can. Yeah, so we, great. We do because it's going to be a bit of shock for some people. I mean, you know, some people throw a lot, put a lot out, and when we don't. When they go by and don't pick up the trash, you're going to get calls. So we want to get the big people prepared as much as possible. Okay. Right. Anybody else? I just quickly want to thank you as well, and I also wanted to mention that that this the town still does this hazardous disposal day, mm -hmm. which uh, is not prominently displayed on the website. I did talk to the town administrator about making sure that's coming up in October, I think. Right. You know, for things like the mercury, fluorescent lights, or other other hazardous things, and if, if there could be a list for people so that they know that I don't think most people I think most people might just throw them in the trash and don't realize how dangerous that is. And then the second thing is we did talk a while ago, and I think it was Mrs. Hurlbut that mentioned this composting too, and a lot of the communities are engaging in services with uh, with clean composting companies. Um, for uh, similar types of pickup, which could eliminate or reduce a lot of the a lot of the waste and making it into fertilizer and th make right. an arrangement. So, I would look forward to seeing that component of it. I know this there was a lot of intervening factors disrupting this from coming to us. So we really appreciate you keeping it on track and and um, all the changes with the hauling company and all those other issues. And so um, I'd like to see that component come back to us too, to see if we can maybe engage for for those residents that want to do composting. I think that would be well. I, I can tell you that um, you know the discussion at the recycling committee is just that, just to start really um, looking at developing a, a recycling component or option that we can present to the residents. So okay. you'll hear more of that, I'm sure. Right. Right. What, there was another question. Oh, I'm so just, just, just one other thing that I think we spoke to you about, and I say we because uh, Mrs. Gonzalez was part of this too, is as far as the rigid plastic, um, we have it like once a year, we can pick, you know, drop it off in June. Yeah. But if we could get a, uh, a container down at, at the DPW site like you have for metal, um, I think you'd get an awful lot of uh, yeah. participation level from the community. Instead of putting it curbside, I didn't re hear what you said. This is the rigid plastic. Oh, the we do. We okay. collect it in June. You know, yeah. a special collection yes. thing. Yeah. Uh, but the, you drive by and you see an awful lot of that out uh, curbside. You know, just going into the regular trash. And I think people would be, if they were made aware of it, uh, more conscious of it. It would be utilized. Uh, so if we have room for another trail, but that right. would be great. Well, I think we do. I think there's opportunity to create a, a better. Um, you know, situation at the yard to uh, have you know dumpsters and, and um, control space for collections like that. So. Yeah. Great, thank you. And, and when is the contract up? I, I know JRM's getting bought out, but our contract goes for how much beyond? It, it continues. But, um, I think we've got. Yeah. I think it's four more years. Four more years. I think this is year it's one or five years. Relatively new, right? Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, that's a great thing. So, yeah, so they, they're going to honor that contract. It's, right. it's just that they have to um, sort of start up, you know, with their their people, their equipment, and, and they're ready to go on totally on. I just wanted to say I'm happy to see this come to fruition. You know, I was there from the beginning, and the reins have been handed over to Mr. Walner, which looks like you're going to be carrying it forward. I'm just happy to see it going to start happening. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gilberto? 
I just wanted to note, and I, I know I had to step out of the meeting briefly, but we had some conversation about the collection schedule. Yes, yes. And uh, did we talk about this already? We Bill did, and I was going to ask you what was it, whether there was so an update to that. There is an update, um, right. and the update is this. We've had some conversation with Republic Services, and as the DPW director mentioned, we're going to start seeing their equipment in town here uh, as soon as October. You may see their blue and red and white trucks um, with their staffing on them. Um, they are going to be looking to uh, make potential modifications to the collection schedule, but we agreed in a meeting with them last week that we would hold off on doing that and let them get their feet underneath them to see how, how things go. Um, JRM is regularly not finishing the town, for those of you who have, you know, have noticed. Um, it's just a matter of where you live, whether you're the week that they don't finish or not. Um, so I think that's a good thing because you know we, we don't you know the town's used to the Tuesday collections. It take a lot of notice to let folks know that we're making yeah. a change when that time comes. Uh, we talked to them about a multi-day rather than a five-day collection. I think it's something that they're willing to look at, to look at. But um, we're we're expecting they're going to be looking for a five-day collection. So that that comes with its own challenges of dividing the town five days a week, dividing the town into five areas. Um, we don't have a timeline for that. Uh, at one point, there was discussion about it being in the fall, but I, I think we're looking at something um, further out into the next year at this point based on our conversations. So I just put that out there. It's not anything that's you know in, in writing, but I know it came up in the last discussion, and um, we've agreed with them that this is not the time to implement that. Let them get some experience with the town, and then we can work together for what the right move is. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Gilberto.